Okay guys, Big Slick here and today I'm going to show you an awesome upgrade that I did on this old Office Jet Hewlett Packard multifunction machine. The common problem of which I explained in a previous video is that, is that these old fluorescent bulbs go bad after a period of time and you get the scanner system failure message. Unfortunately, you can't always predict how long one of these bulbs will last. I've had some last five years, and I've had a few that have only lasted between one to two years. This bulb started going bad after 16 months and generating the scanner system failure message, so I decided that I thought I could go ahead and do an LED upgrade and see if that would work. And in fact, I was able to get it to work. The original circuit was nothing more than a little driver board that drives the fluorescent bulb which was mounted right here on the carriage. It plugs in and receives power. This is nothing more than a power port right here. And obviously the bulb was mounted inside of here. So what I did was just take that off. The board comes out by simply unplugging both ends of it. and. I unsoldered the lead after unplugging this, this yellow and black power lead was mounted underneath here on the board. So I simply unsoldered that in order to be able to reuse it. So it goes on there. The black wire is the neutral. The yellow wire here is the voltage. When this machine first fires up, it has 15 volts DC here. Shortly thereafter, that's a starting voltage. Maybe 10-15 seconds later, it cuts down to 12 volts, which is then the working voltage. These LED uh, panels that you can buy that are meant for converting LCD to LED monitors, these operate perfect at 12 volts, and the 15 volts is fine too. The operating range is around 12 to 24 volts. So let me show you one of the circuits that you can buy. Okay, this is an example. I bought a two-pack in case I messed one up. You get the LED driver array and you get the uh, driver board here. These LEDs are designed in a manner that they can be shortened. If you flip them over on the back, every place here that you see one of the white marks you can cut it there just with a, se a set of diagonals and the rest of the array will work fine. So you shorten it to the length that you need as close as possible and as you see I could get one of the settings there, one of the options was a perfect fit for this scanner. Now the, the tricky part was interfacing it to the actual machine. So what I did is, as you see, I mounted this board just with black electrical tape underneath this cover that obviously you would remove. This cover goes on here, simply unsnaps. So you take that up. I simply mounted it on here. Now the way these boards work is, that, like I say, they will operate from 12 to 24 volts, so that operating voltage is fine. Now on the end where you have the four wires, the white wire will be completely unneeded. So you can just snip that close and get rid of it. The three wires that you will need are the black, the red, and the yellow. Now unfortunately you may get a little confused because here you have black and yellow. But you're not going to connect it that way on here. The black and the red are your voltage terminals. So black will be connecting the black on this board, the red will connect to the yellow. Now in order for the array to turn on, it needs to have four volts of sense at this yellow wire. So what you would do is you will then uh, connect one end of the yellow wire will go to a 180,000 ohm resistor. The other end of the resistor will connect to the red wire. So in other words, the only thing you will have at the end of this yellow wire will be one end of the 180,000 ohm resistor. On the, the other end of the resistor will be going to the red wire. So in other words, 
connected to this yellow, you will have the red and one end of the resistor. The other end of the resistor will connect to the yellow. You can shorten the leads as much as you want so that they will tuck nicely into this open space here. And then whenever you put the uh, plastic cover back on this, you will have no problem at all keeping it nice and neat tucked inside of here and no one will know the difference and it shouldn't travel anywhere. And as you see, I have the LEDs facing upward just as you would expect. Obviously, it takes a little bit of trial and error when you're mounting it on the sides in the original silicone uh, holders that the fluorescent bulb was in. It takes a little bit of trial and effort to, when you're mounting it to make sure that these LEDs don't start to twist inward or outward. You want to make sure that they're nice and straight coming out where it is and not into this metal uh, frame here. So once you have this all installed I would just simply suggest that you clean the glass area top and bottom before you put the cover back on and I will reassemble this and show you how it works. It actually fires up extremely fast and has very few searches to try to find the home position. That's because this LED array is nice and bright. So it, uh, it probably works better than new. The unit is reassembled and so I'll go ahead and turn it on now and let you see how fast it will fire up and not give any error message. So you can see how bright the LEDs are right there. So I'll grab a document here, bring it over and show you how it works. Here's what I'm going to photocopy in black and white. I'm using just the cheap fast setting. Might as well be the front cover of the original OfficeJet R80 setup guide here. And there it is, a pretty good copy of the original R80 uh, front page here. So there you go, if you want to do a LED upgrade to your old office jet scanner bulb, that should do the trick for you. In theory, this should last a heck of a long time, longer than the original fluorescent bulbs. I suppose that only time will tell. but. It's something to give it a shot if you're tired of replacing the bulbs and you want to keep these old units working longer. Thanks. Bye.